has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. All right, Carver, how are we going to hour number two? And we do have a couple of games tonight. Uh, Obviously, we were talking about some of them, uh, the Giants and Dodgers, that uh, A's-Tigers game two of that doubleheader. And uh, certainly uh, the games that are still going on in baseball, it's still 2-1 Astros on the Yankees uh, in the ninth. The Yankees have a runner at first with an out, and the Rangers are up 6-0 on the Marlins. Also in the ninth, a runner on, nobody out. Yep, three games tonight for you. We have the second half of the doubleheaders for two of those games you just mentioned first. In Houston, Yankees and Astros game two. Domingo Herman makes his first start of the season. Luis Garcia goes for the Astros, minus 122 for them right now. This total, eight and a half for game number two tonight. Yeah, I took Garcia. I don't trust Herman now. You know, obviously... I hope he goes out and pitches a great game and and the Yankees find a way uh, to win. And particularly if they lose this first game uh, in the ninth, they're down a run. They got to score a run now or never. And then if they lose that game, they get swept in the two in Houston. And uh, they lost the other game in Houston uh, before the break. And I mean, it's just uh, all very perilous to me. They just continue to lose to the Astros. And I think it's starting to look like kind of a trend to me that they can't beat them. Uh, it certainly is. Game two at the Ashtray tonight. Tigers and the A's. Hill goes for the Tigers. Frankie Montas returns uh, after being out the last couple of weeks. Minus 162 for the A's. This total at seven. Yeah, I bet on Montas here in the nightcap. I split it. I took the uh, Tigers in game one with Scooble, and I'm going to go Montas uh, with a show-off game in game two at the Ashtray. Uh, And finally, the late night game, 10 o'clock Eastern, first pitch out of Chavez Ravine, uh, where the Dodgers and the Giants will take each other on. Minus 126 for White uh, going for the Dodgers. Rodon for the Giants, plus 108. Total down to 7.5 from 8 earlier in the day. You know, uh, I took the Dodgers in this game, and not because of White. I told you earlier, because this is going to end up being a bullpen type situation for me. Uh, I don't trust the Giants in Dodger Stadium. I know they've given them fits there before, but I haven't felt that this year. I haven't seen that this year where I'm like, wow, the Giants are a real problem for the Dodgers. I don't think the Dodgers are having worries with anybody, and particularly when they play at home, I don't care who's pitching. I think the Yankees just tied that game up, Carver High. I didn't even look, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling, and they did as, your boy Aaron Hack just got plated with two outs in the ninth. Your boy Kiner Falefa drove him in. We got a tie wow. game over here. Whole freshies that? for everybody. Pour me one. Yankees are back. Look at that. IKF getting it done uh, in the ninth. A hit into the hole. It's short. Hey, you know what now? Like you said, get this game now. You got Herman going tonight. Gotta win. Bad pitch. You got to win this first game. Makes you a little bit more comfortable in the nightcap. Not as much pressure on Herman if they can get it done. Uh, so tomorrow, full slate. Everybody is back in business off the All-Star break. We got some good ones too, Scotty. Look what we have set up for the weekend. The Padres come into City Field to take on the Mets this weekend. Huge in the AL Central. Guardians and the White Sox. In Chicago, Blue Jays and the Red Sox bunched up in that AL wild card race. And the Astros, after playing the doubleheader tonight in Houston, have to fly all the way to Seattle to face the Mariners, who are on a 14-game winning streak. That is a tough spot for Houston uh, tomorrow night, Scotty. Yeah, I'm never betting on a team that plays a doubleheader and then has to fly that far from Houston to the Pacific Northwest to Seattle. It's not like flying from Miami there or New York there, but it is still a long flight after a double dip, a day-nighter, and then a trip up there to face a team that's won 14 in a row. I am all over Seattle in that game. I would love to see the Red Sox stumble to start the second half. This is a huge opportunity for the White Sox 
They have to start winning every game. They're at home. They're playing a team a game ahead of them in the division. They've got to beat the Guardians. And I think the Padre Mets series at City is going to be fantastic. Two really good teams. There you go. Uh, the weekend set up for you. You'll go through all the games here tomorrow on Coast to Coast. We're welcoming all of our radio affiliates, Sirius XM, 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have you with us on Coast to Coast. Uh, all right, guys, we got a lot of college football to do as well. We know the SEC is having all their big meetings. That ends today. You have the ACC in the mix, too. We've got a lot of guys to hear from today on Coast to Coast. So when we come back, we'll get Kirby and Stetson Bennett and all these guys. But I will tell you first about Kirby before we hear from him after the break. Uh, he, he said the other day that he was ready to step down last summer before the season. Of course, he then ended up winning the national title. I guess he doesn't feel that way anymore. How's 10 years and $112 million from the Georgia Bulldogs making him one of the highest paid coaches in college football? I don't think he's thinking about stepping away anymore after all that money. <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, you know, these guys now make more money than God. It is unbelievable to me, uh, to be honest with you, what college football, uh, you know, is paying the highest level coaches, Saban, Unreal. Smart, you know, Swinney. Uh, they're all making absorbent amounts of money. That deal uh, is huge for Kirby. I'm really not that shocked uh, to see him getting paid like that after knocking off Alabama and winning a national championship that they craved in Athens forever. The early line. Do you think a Big 12 Pac-12 merger would have made sense? No, I don't. I don't. Because when you add more teams in, Kevin, you're going to divvy up more pieces of the pie. It's the reason why you see these big guys leaving. And we're looking right now at these Pac-12 teams, Kevin, and saying to ourselves, what are you actually bringing to the table to the Big 12? Apparently not enough. Only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. He is finished. He'll come back next year. It'll happen again, and he'll never pitch again. That'll be the end of it. I, I think that Strasburg had his he had his moment in that World Series when the Nationals won it. He gave it all out, that, and he he had injury problems before that. And now he just hasn't been able to stay on the field since. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think that he is finished. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. That it means more for the league where it always just means more to add Texas and Oklahoma than the Big Ten adding USC and UCLA. Texas comes in with its own network uh, that has mm. its own set of advertisers and money and everything else that they'll fold into the SEC. I know you as a perennial uh, college football playoff team contender. Will they be that in the SEC? No, but they are a team that brings that sort of prestige with them. The Sports Grid Network.
So, you know, the Yankees, when uh, Aaron Hicks got played in to tie the game and he went into the dugout, I noticed on the wall of the dugout, it was right there. It said, at Sports Grid and at Sports Grid TV, right on the back of the wall. I couldn't believe that they got those logos in at Minute Maid Park in the Yankees dugout. I don't know how Rebecca does it, but she did it. And the fact that she did it is very impressive. So I was very stoked to see that pushing our social media agenda in all the right places. Uh, tremendous job, as always. I even thought I saw a couple of banners, Scotty, uh, at when Kirby was walking off down in Atlanta at the SEC Media Day. I thought I saw a couple on some of the tables down there uh, where the reporters were sitting. So really is getting uh, all over the country right now uh, doing a tremendous job. Let's talk about Kirby. We told you he's getting a lot of money. He is now defending national champion. Does not have a lot of his starters back on offensive defense. A lot of guys go to the NFL off that Georgia Bulldog team. Kirby does not care, Scotty. He wants the same focus as last year and the same results. Here he is. The fall camp just around the corner, do you have any indication of what this team's identity might be heading into this upcoming season? Yeah, hungry. I talked about it earlier. I mean, there's a hunger among this group that uh, they, a lot of guys want to prove that they can replace the other guy. And uh, they don't want to be the other guy. They want to be the next guy. And you look across the board, we had some really high-profile players, really on defense and offense, when you count the backs and the receivers, that we, we have to replace those guys. And the hunger comes from the opportunity the talented players behind them have. And I'm, I'm excited. That's why complacency is something that happens to people that don't look what's, they don't look what's going on. We, we, don't, we don't have that problem. There's not a day that we don't wake up and think, what can we do better to make our program better? And our players are doing that right now. Well, you know, here's the deal. Uh, it's great that he got all that money. And, and now the only thing he has to live with is that he's only allowed, if, if at all, to lose one game a year. At one <laughs> game only. If you lose two games, you're done. Your season's over. You're a failure. You're going to be bashed, dragged through the mud, threatened, death threats. Your family's going to be threatened. You're gonna, your children won't be safe to go to the school bus. They'll have to be driven to school in a you know, limousine because uh, in Athens, if you lose one game, they want you fired. So they're gonna owe him a ton of money. He's never allowed to lose ever more than one game ever. And that's just the one regular season game. You can still get into the playoff with one loss. Anything more than one loss ever for Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, Swinney, and one yeah. loss, that's it. Any more than one loss, and you are an utter failure. It's funny because just similar, I heard Dabo you know, say it with Clemson down at the ACC yesterday. He was like, when I first got here and I won 10 games, you know, the fans wanted to throw me a parade. Now if I win 10 games, they want me fired because that means I lost two games. Yeah. So he's, it's, it's so true uh, when you think about it that way. Of course, one of the guys who is going to be back – for Georgia is quarterback Stenson Bennett, Scotty. He played tremendous in the playoff, beating Alabama. He did not go to the NFL because, quite frankly, he knows that nobody was going to draft him. Here he is saying he's coming back for Georgia for one more year. Why not? You play the game to play the game, uh, and you play the game to, to win and to compete against the best players. And if, if I, like, I'm able – I'm secure enough to, like, I can look in the mirror. Like, I wasn't going to get drafted high last year, right? So what was the guarantee that I was going to go start in the NFL last year? It was probably pretty low, or this next year. It was probably pretty low. Um, and so this is the best football, this is the best conference in the country. You know, if we take care of business, you know, then we take care of business here. Um, you're competing against the best players. You got the best players on your team, best coaches. It's the smartest league. So... You know, and I mean, I love, I think it's the biggest honor in the world to be able to go out there with the G on the side of my helmet and my name on the back and look at my brothers across from me and know that we're playing for the University of Georgia and for the state of Georgia. I actually, you know, he, he had the game of his life and I don't think he'll ever have a bigger game the rest of his career. In fact, I agree. Uh, I, I don't see him in the NFL at all. I hope he enjoyed that title game because I don't think this year is going to go the same way for that kid. I don't think he's that good. And neither does anybody uh, no. else in the NFL. I, I, I think he made the right move. Come back for Georgia one more time around. Try to win it again. Of course, everybody in the SEC East 
is chasing Georgia now, Scotty. That includes Kentucky and Mark Stoops. And to be quite honest, Stoops says, I can't find ways to beat the guy. What else do you want me to try to do? Let's hear what his angle is. How do you gain on Georgia? I, I mean, I can't answer that. I just saw Kirby up there. I could maybe try to whack his knees out or something, knock him out for a minute. Oh, uh, take him out but, at the um, knees. No, he's there done a great job. I mean, they got a lot of respect for Kirby, <laughs> the way they coach, the way they recruit, the way everything they're doing in, in the program. Boy, they're doing Mark. things right. I, I got to worry about us <laughs> and how do I make us better? Take him out well, at the knees. Uh, you know, the difference is, is that uh, in Lexington, they get three star players and at Alabama and Georgia, they get nothing but five-star players. Ohio State's the That's same it. way. So, uh, and, and now you're going to get that, obviously, Oklahoma and, and USC. And I don't even think UCLA gets five-star players. I think they get primarily four-star players because they've never really been that good. When is the last time UCLA was, you know, really good in football besides never? I mean, never. So they have never been that good. So, uh, you know... Mark has, at least he's come to grips with reality. He has no chance in the SEC. He's one of the bottom tier that I talk about all the time. Kentucky football is as bad as Indiana football. They should get together and have cocktails and be lovers. Mark has taken Kentucky to five straight bowl games. Uh, he five, has at least yeah, gotten, five crappy bowl games that nobody watches them, and no one cares about. Them, he's gotten them off the deck. A little bit. No, they will not compete with those Whatever. other teams. Whatever. He but can't. You know what he is? a little bit better. Mark Stoops is the fungus <laughs> in John Calipari's toenails. Let's go to Auburn next. Uh, Brian Harrison, Scott. He had a very tough first year at Auburn. He came over from Boise State, lost his last five games, and then after the season, there was reports that he was abusive to his players verbally. There was also reports that he had an affair with his assistant, people trying to get him out of Auburn. And he says, you did not get me. I'm not going anywhere. Here's Brian. Second time here and uh, excited to be here. And uh, I know some of you uh, out there looking at me didn't expect me to be here. There was an inquiry. It was uncomfortable. It was unfounded. Uh, and it uh, presented an opportunity for people to you know, personally attack me, my family, uh, and also our program. And, and it didn't work. So right now, uh, our focus is on moving forward. And what it did, it was united our football team. It united our players, yeah, united sure. our staff, it united our football team. And so uh, I'm really proud of our guys, and I'm proud of what something like that, um, that could be something very challenging like and difficult uh, for a lot of people, how our guys stepped up and handled it. I'm so sorry that um, I, I listened to literally nothing of what that man just said at all because no one's ever heard of him no one knows him no one likes him because they don't know him and auburn doesn't matter either i mean they just you know what they are you are alabama's b that's what you are i mean i don't even know who that guy is do we really have to listen to guys on this show that nobody knows is there a way we could just avoid that in the future honestly i don't even know who that guy is Who, who is he Brian had a rough first year. Uh, there you go. Later on, we he has no ACC chance at Auburn to succeed at all. No chance whatsoever to succeed no, at Auburn. Mark it down. Later on, Mario Cristobal and the U back uh, this morning at the ACC Media Day, Scotty. We will hear from Mario, including no more turnover chain uh, for the U. Mario going to lay it all out for you, Scotty, while he got rid of the chain. That'll be exciting later on. Listen, man, I think that thing is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life, watching those <laughs> brothers jump up and down with that chain on, and then they never win games. They celebrate fumble and, and picks, and they never win games. I told you that nope. was the dumbest thing ever. They, they should have gotten rid of that thing five years ago. The morning after. So today we hit the streets of Manhattan to test New Yorkers baseball knowledge and to see how many all stars we have. Don Mattingly was a former player for the Yankees. Now a head coach of. I don't know, man. I know nothing about sports. 
Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers plays football, but relatively close. Jeter. Derek Jeter. Uh, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge it is. We're in New York. They love the Yankees. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. The team I keep coming back to is the Mets. And I come back to the Mets because they are all in right now. They have two starting pitchers, one of which is the best pitcher in baseball when he's on the mound coming back and Jacob DeGrom, who might opt out of his contract. The other is Max Scherzer, who's an older pitcher. They are in right now for this season. Juan Soto, you can back up the truck with the prospects the Mets have, whether it's Alvarez, Beatty, um, Mauricio. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. The Baltimore Orioles take uh, Jackson Holiday, who is a shortstop, and according to Keith Law from The Athletic, he was basically one of the guys who did the, uh, you know, improved his draft stock the most over the last 12 months. He uh, essentially, he got into the gym, reworked his body so that uh, he kind of went from more of a, a contact, even swing plane type pitch to, or a hitter to uh, like a power hitter. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch, or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017, world number one. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The early line. This actually was a positive sign from the Lakers because at least these guys are talking, trying to repair that relationship. And also, it doesn't hurt that they finally put out a positive leak on the Lakers side of this because nonstop negativity has been the tone as it pertains to Russ and L.A. Only on SportsGrid. All right, for all back on Coast to Coast, always fun to have the ink stain wretch on. Uh, our friend down in Philadelphia, the Inquirer, Marcus Hayes, joins us on C to C. Good to see you again, buddy. Uh, I actually. <laughs> what? Philadelphia gets me every time. I'm sorry. Well, it's always worked for me. You know, it's just got a nice <laughs> ring to it. Oh, the Astros beat the Yankees on a walk-off. I'm going to vomit. I just saw it. Oh, out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> that probably makes you happy. Right, Marcus? You like yeah. when, the, uh, when the Yankees lose? Well, you know, you got the evil empire versus the cheaters. So who do you root for? Right. You know what I mean? They're both bad, right? Uh, so <laughs> right. let's talk about... Uh, first of all, Harden's deal. And you, know, I, you have to explain it to me because I'm not a real big fan of, you know, you got a deal in place for $47 million, whatever it was, and then you go and tell him, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm not going to do this deal. Why don't you just give me less money and, and spend it somewhere else? You know, Frankly, Marcus, I don't come from that side of the river. If I have a deal in place for that kind of money, I'm going to go get my money uh, no matter what. In professional sports, I don't understand, frankly, hometown discounts and, and giving money back. I really don't. He thinks because he gave money back that they're going to win a championship. Explain that to me. Honestly, I think it's more of a betting on himself situation, kind of a show me deal where he's taking $15 million less for this season and knowing he can opt in for about the same amount next season or walk and get a lot, lot more. 
So, or, or, you know, stay and extend for a lot more. And he really does, if he's going to maximize at the age of 33, if he's going to maximize what he can get by the time he's 37, 38, he needs to have a better season. He needs to be coming off a better season than the last two. So I think he's gambling on himself. If that, that doesn't necessarily justify it. And if you're the players union, you're probably not super happy about a guy you know, essentially giving back $15 million when, you know, every player is supposed to make as much as they can every year. So, you know, I got to tell you, I think the greatest travesty I've seen uh, in a long time is what they did to Embiid. Uh, I, I have never in my life seen a guy dominate the way he did at 30 a game for the whole season and win the scoring title and the amount of 40-10 games that he had uh, and then get shafted because they, I just, you know, I, I was screaming everything on the air about that, that they gave it to Jokic. I just do not believe for one minute he was the MVP. I thought Embiid was. And if he can't win it with that type of season, uh, even he said it. I, he doesn't know what he, he, he has to do to, to get people's attention. So why even try? Uh, and I, I just, the whole thing makes me sick to my stomach. It's semantics and punishment. When Joel Embiid started playing after his two years of sitting out, and I think it was 2016, he named himself the process, which was brilliant and stupid because now he's saddled with the, the Philadelphia 76ers strategy of losing for really four straight years. Now, it's a great branding tool, but it also reminds everyone every time Joel Embiid's name comes up, why Joel Embiid is there. And there's still resentment, whether it's right or wrong, there's resentment all out, all throughout the league about how the Philadelphia 76ers brought themselves to this point. And it's clear, and it's, it's not fair, and it's not right. Joel Embiid didn't do this. Josh Harris did. But they're punishing Joel Embiid for Josh Harris's mismanagement of the Philadelphia 76ers. So when you saw, because we saw Harden play in Brooklyn, right? And then he went down there. And I want to get your opinion of what he looked like with the Sixers. Now, I have heard all the fat jokes and everything else about Harden and his game, which is not even near what we saw him do in Houston. He was never that guy in Brooklyn, and he wasn't that guy in Philly. What makes people believe, just because he took a pay cut, that? and I think you're right, uh, you're ex your experience knowing about uh, what he's trying to do with the one-year deal, like prove it and then get a better deal makes the most sense to me. But it doesn't change the fact that he's just not that good anymore. He's just fat, out of shape, uh, does not have that dribble drive one step and go and finish guys at the 10. He doesn't have that game anymore. What makes people believe that they're going to win a championship with Harden and Embiid? I mean, they just had him. They didn't even sniff it. Well, I'm not sure that a lot of people do believe that outside of Daryl Morey, who really is the only person who needs to believe it, right? So here's, here's what I saw happen with Harden. I saw him get out of shape in Houston, land out of shape in uh, Brooklyn, play out of shape and get hurt in Brooklyn. Then by the time he gets to Philadelphia, he's in pretty good shape, but he isn't quite healed. And the rules changed. All of a sudden, you know, you can't, cause the you can't create the contact and get the foul that's what 20 percent of his entire game and that's a, you you are defended differently so i think the 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 combination of things being out of shape getting hurt not getting over the injury and then not being able to sort of bail himself out when he gets to the rim i think those things diminished him does that make him worth 35 37 million bucks probably not but he's not worth nothing you know, he's still a good 23.10 assist guy, and that's probably worth 25 or $30 million in the NBA. And if he becomes more than that, he'll make more than that. But I don't think he'll ever reach that level again. So the pieces that I like there, Maxi, et cetera, do you like the rest of that team beyond Harden and Embiid? Because that's really what it boils down to. We already know that they can ball. And we already know who's going to have the ball in his hands 80% of the time is Harden. Uh, and we already know what JoJo does. What about the rest of them? Well, the biggest disappointment, I think, to this date 
of the of maybe the entire process outside of Ben Simmons melting down is Tobias Harris never sort of took that next step to make himself worth the thirty million dollars a year he makes until this playoff series. When he, when he produced the way that he produced in the playoffs and played excellent defense and became kind of a vocal leader, for me, he's the X factor. He's the Chris Middleton. You know what I mean? He's the guy that amplifies Giannis and Drew Holiday. He's the third piece. Maxi is bonus. You don't know what he is. He's not a good defender. He's a raw basketball player, probably two years from hitting, from real, you know, you understanding what he can be, us knowing what he can be. But for me, it's Tobias Harris. And yeah, I think they can contend, you know, assuming Middleton comes back and he's good. That's the best team. Milwaukee's the best team in the East. But I think the Sixers can contend if you get Tobias Harris like this in the playoffs next spring. What's your feeling uh, real quick? Because I want to talk about the uh, Phillies and Eagles uh, as well quickly. Uh, Do you think Durant and Kyrie Irving uh, end up back in Brooklyn or dealt? I think they're dealt. I, I don't think they want to play there anymore. And it's hilarious to watch because, you know, I, I don't I can't think of another team that uh, whose hopes ascended so quickly. And so many people are going to lose so much money having bet and betting on. It's just it's spectacular. <laughs> look, at, look at the ink stain, Brad. He's over here enjoying people's fail, just absolute ticket ripping and disaster therapy, going to see shrinks. People are <laughs> jumping off buildings and he's enjoying it. Look at him. He's all diabolical. Uh, what are they going to do, the Phillies? Uh, Bryce wants to get the pins out. He is so vital to their success. I know Schwarbaum's been great. How quickly do you think Bryce can get going again and get back to his 35-100 clip? If he's viable come September, healthy, understands what his swing is, and don't forget he's still got the elbow issue, which will be taken care of in the offseason, and be the DH MVP candidate that he was, uh, that would be a huge bonus for them. Because, you know, getting strength back in your hand, getting your timing back down, is just it's just so hard to do with a hand injury. We've seen it over and over again. So to answer your question, if he can be – if they can stay in it through August and he, they can, he can help them make a September run having regained form, they've got a shot to get to the playoffs. And, you know, with the first two starters they have, you know, with uh, uh, Zach and Aaron Nola, they can, they can win a series. You know, and who knows what happens after that if their pulpen strong. Right now, they're in a wild card. Let's see if they can hold on. Uh, the Eagles getting ready to open camp. Uh, all eyes on Jalen Hurts. Are they excited about the Eagles? Because I know a lot of people like Adam Kaplan here on the network saying the Eagles are going to win the division. I still have my reservations about that because I still think Dak Prescott's a problem and I think the Cowboys are a problem. I think that team can repeat. I got to tell you, the uh, there is a lot of excitement, but this is for Philadelphia. They love contact. They love conflict. They love defense, and they got a lot better on defense. Brandon Graham's coming back. The offensive line's going to be good. The defensive line's going to be good, and that's probably all they need to win what should be a really bad NFC East. It should be a bad NFC East again, and that's all the Eagles probably need to win that division. Real quick, how good does Hurts get? Because I like this game. Everybody says he's this and that. He's not good enough, and he has to prove himself. I thought he did. Well, if he ever becomes Ryan Tannehill, that would be a great ceiling. And to expect more than that, I don't think is fair to him. But, again, you know, a guy like Ryan Tannehill, with the right defense and the right running game, can win. Marcus, it's always good to see you, brother. I'm glad you put all those hexes on the people in Brooklyn and that you're happy that the evil empire lost uh, on a walk off to the Astros. Thanks a lot for shafting us again, Marcus. I'll talk to you soon. Pharrell, coast to coast. He is finished. He'll come back next year. It'll happen again, and he'll never pitch again. That'll be the end of it. I, I think that Strasburg had his, he had his moment. 
in that World Series when the Nationals won it. He gave it all out, that, and he, he had injury problems before that. And now he just hasn't been able to stay on the field since. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think that he is finished. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. The starter for the AL is Shane, Man Shane McClanahan, but maybe Shohei will pitch at a certain point, but Shohei will lead off in that spot. And it's the first pitch of the game to Shohei Otani. The betting favorite right now is a strike or a foul tip. That's even money, plus 100. But why not take a shot? Why not sprinkle that Shohei makes some contact, puts one into play? That's plus 550. Any other outcome. We're going for plus money tonight at the All-Star Game. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bama. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Maurice Allen. 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? All right, for all back on Coast to Coast, always a pleasure to get Peter Gollenbach on, the New York Times best-selling baseball author. His books are the best in the world. We always like to chat with him on C to C. Peter, uh, always good to see you. I hope you're doing well, my friend. I don't know if you uh, uh, were, a were able to catch that uh, Yankee uh, tough loss today uh, after they played it a run in the ninth to tie it after LeMayu had hit a home run to uh, make it a one-run game. They tie it up on the uh, Kiner Falefa grounder between third and short and, and Hicks score, but they lost on a walk off. Uh, oh. As I watched the uh, Astros, they just keep beating the Yankees. I mean, if they're going to go to the World Series, they got to find a way to beat the Houston Astros, don't they? You're absolutely right about that. And it is not going to be easy. You know, that is that is one one tough ball club, that Astro team, banging garbage cans or not. Uh, they, they win ball games, and I'm telling you, the Yankees are going to have trouble with them. You know, it's funny. When Seattle won 116 games back when, they didn't make it to the World Series. I remember that. And, and listen, uh, the job that uh, Dusty Baker has done in Houston when all of the drama played out with this uh, scandal and cheating, et cetera, can you believe uh, the gloves he put on and he went to work down there with that team and that they would lose Springer and Correa and still be as good as they are is absolutely insane. If they had to pick one person to run that ball club, Dusty Baker is the absolute perfect one to choose. He, he, 
he is adored by those ball players. You can just tell. And he's done a tremendous, tremendous job. You know, I was saying earlier today on the show that I felt that the team, as you mentioned, Seattle, uh, that would be most intriguing to me to go after Juan Soto would be the Mariners. Uh, I'm fed up with the Yankees and Dodgers are getting everyone that's available in the business and in the open market. Uh, All players are going to end up in the Bronx or in in, uh, Los Angeles with the Dodgers. I get sick and tired of that. I think it would be fantastic. You didn't didn't like that Mookie Betts. You didn't like Mookie Betts leaving the Red Sox and going to the Dodgers. You didn't like that. I'm just sick and tired of the uh, that every player is going to the same two teams. I would love to see Seattle get their hands on Soto and match him up with that kid Rodriguez and Ty France and Robbie Ray and make Seattle important in baseball again. It can't be about the Dodgers and Yankees every year. This isn't the 70s. Well, this sounds like an argument that people from all around the country, uh, not in New York, made in the 1950s and 60s. It can't possibly be about somebody else beside New York. And yet in the 50s and 60s, obviously, it was all about New York. It was the the New York Yankees and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Here it's the New York Yankees and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And unfortunately, they are the two, two teams with the most money. And they've got very, very intelligent people uh, running their organizations. Uh, the Dodger guy came from the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays executives seem to be going all over the country now. There's now one in Boston. There's now one in Houston. Um, right. All the same metrics that they're picking up from the Tampa Bay Rays are going all the way across the country. And uh, these teams are winning. What do you think of, uh, seriously, the as I remember, you're talking about the 50s and 60s. Uh, yep. The Yankees in, in 1960, when they lost to the Pirates in the World Series on the Mazeroski homer in the ninth at Forbes Field, they were outscored in that World Series by 30 runs, yep. and yet they still All won right. the series 4-3. What do you remember most about that team losing to the Pirates? I remember after Mazeroski hit that home run, I didn't eat for three days. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst. Day. It was the worst day of my life. It was terrible. How, how could that possibly be? How could a ball hit Tony Kubek in the throat for crying out loud? I mean, that that's ridiculous that the Yankees should lose to the Pirates in 1960. It was just terrible. It was just terrible. <laughs> did you did you think that uh, when they lost five two to the Pirates at PNC? a few weeks ago and then turned around and beat them 16 to nothing the next day with the two grand slams that the Buccos had it coming, Pete, they had it coming that day. You know, it's funny. Uh, There, there are some teams where you know that the owners want to win. I'm just not sure that Pittsburgh's one of those teams. You look at the people they've lost. Look at Cole. I mean, there there are pitchers, there are great players all over the league that used to be Pittsburgh Pirates, and they give these people up. I mean, we had a football owner of the Buccaneers, uh, is the first owner of the Bucks, and every year the most, the best player that he had, the, the guy with the highest salary, he would release because he didn't want to have to pay the guy. It was bizarre. The Pirates seemed to be doing the same thing. Um it's, it's just, it must be incredibly, incredibly frustrating to be a Pirate fan. I can only yeah, think that. It. The star players me, get shipped is. out year after year. Believe me, it is. And they're about to lose more of them. They, and they lose them left and right. What do you think that the, um, the Mets will do if they get DeGrom back healthy every five days on the mound with Scherzer and DeGrom? Do you believe that they can go to the World Series? How could you not? You've got two pitchers like that. That's 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 exactly who wins World Series. You got two pitchers like that. You got Houston with Ver- Verlander, and and they've got another pitcher who's spectacular too. The, 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 that's a team. Now, you got to look at the Yankees, of course, with Cole, former Pittsburgh pitcher, and Nestor Cortez and Taylon. Montgomery, I mean, 
there's a possibility the Yankees this year could theoretically win 112, 113, 114 games with that pitching staff. And never mind the, the, the guys batting, you know, in that lineup. That's the strongest Yankee lineup that they've had in a long, 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 long time. There's no doubt. Do you think that they can actually... Now, this is a guy that I think is more important than getting Juan Soto. I know they talk about Soto in New York. I yep. would rather they go get Luis Castillo, the pitcher of the Reds. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he may be. He just might be the very best pitcher in baseball nobody's ever heard of. He pitched against us here in the Trop in St. Petersburg, and he looked unhittable. The guy was hitting 101 miles an hour, and it was just breathtaking to watch that guy pitch. And why? I never could quite understand it. Why teams? Why a team with Cincinnati, when you got a treasure like that, why would you ever give him up? You know, give him a seven-year contract and keep him for crying out loud. It's the same thing as as Cole and all these pirates that leave. The Reds are going to sell him as sure as I'm sitting here. How much money do you believe the Yankees will end up uh, having to give Aaron Judge? I said uh, easily from the beginning. I said 300 million. Now more. I'm starting more. to lean more towards four. Yeah, four. Four. You got to keep him. You got to keep him. He could run for mayor of New York. Yeah, he could run for governor of New York State. I mean, this guy, since since Derek Jeter left, this guy right now is the face of the Yankees. There's no two ways about it. Um, he may very well this year break Babe Ruth's one-season record. He just might do it. Record for are a Yankee. You watching, are you watching the Captain uh, seven-part series on ESPN? Did you happen to see any I of saw, it yet? I saw, the, I saw the first part, and I was just enthralled. I thought it was wonderful. Absolutely, I am. Yeah. That's funny. Pete Gent, do you remember Pete Gent of the Cowboys who wrote sure. Dallas North, North 40? Sure. Pete Gent was his American Legion baseball coach in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Come on. And Pete was a friend of mine. I did a book on the Cowboys. Cowboys have always been my heroes. Pete Gent was one of the stars of that book. And while we were talking, he was telling me about Jeter. And what an absolute spectacular high school ball player Jeter was. Pete Gent was his coach in baseball in American Legion. So uh, now tonight is, I believe, part two of the seven-part series. Uh, what uh, are your uh, What are your fondest memories of them? Because when I watched uh, the first one, I never remembered how much he struggled uh, in the minors when they drafted well, nobody him would know. And, what he, and what he went through. Right. Nobody would know that. I mean, the, the amazing thing about every single player who's on a major league roster is every single one of those people, except maybe maybe Griffey Jr., every single one of these people struggled. They all struggle. That's why they spend four or five years in the minors before they come up to the major leagues. I mean, this is the most incredibly difficult game to play. And so you had to sort of learn slowly, slowly, slowly until you could finally figure it out. Derek Jeter, his first year, made 54 errors. At shortstop, amazing. But but I'll, t I'll tell you a story. You know, uh, one of the books I have right now is Bobby Valentine's, Bobby right. Valentine's book, Valentine's Way. And Valentine was telling me he he was at Spokane, in the Dodgers organization, and he was playing shortstop and he was making errors. And the pitchers went to Tommy Lasorda and said to him, "We don't want this guy playing shortstop behind us anymore." And you know what Lasorda did? He said, I want all of you guys to get in line and I want you to get Bobby Valentine's autograph because he's going to be playing shortstop in the major leagues and you guys are going to be home digging ditches. <laughs> Can you imagine? And these guys, these guys all stood in line and got Bobby Valentine's autograph. Yeah. Hey, so Pete, uh, speaking of the Cowboys real quick, I got 90 seconds respectfully. I was just talking on the show uh, the other day about how there's only two teams that know how to print money in sports, like that really know how to print money. And it's the Dallas yeah. Cowboys and the New York Yankees. It's the Federal Reserve. <laughs> Nobody knew that the money was actually not in, in D.C. 
It's down in Arlington, Texas. That's where they print all the money underneath the Cowboys stadium. <laughs> and Jerry's in charge of all the ink. He is. He certainly is. Meanwhile, while I got 30 seconds, I have a book out now, Whispers of the Gods, where I've interviewed Ted Williams and Stan Musial and Roy Campanella and Ron Santo and all sorts of people. So if you enjoy listening to these guys talk about baseball, Whispers of the Gods is the book. Listen, Pete, all of your books are so fantastic. What I try to do is I try to read them all when I'm uh, on airplanes so that I'm happy uh, because when I'm on airplanes, I'm generally upset. And as the people on this show know, I'm not real friendly to be around when I'm upset. So I try to read your books to keep me in a soothing pattern of happiness. Nice. And, <laughs> and, and a beer and a beer as well. That's right. I, I'm going to need yes. a cold beer after the Yankees yes. lost today because now I'm under pressure for them to win the nightcap tonight. Will they beat the Astros tonight with Herman? Absolutely, they will. <laughs> They're going to win 115 Pete, I, games this year. That's right. And and then lose to the Astros in the ALCS, unfortunately. Peter, or, or, I love or to you. Seattle. Or, to Seattle. or to Seattle with Juan Soto. <laughs> that's right. Pete, I love you, man. Good to see you. Take care, man. Thanks so much. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. He is finished. He'll come back next year. It'll happen again, and he'll never pitch again. That'll be the end of it. I, I think that Strasburg had his, he had his moment in that World Series when the Nationals won it. He gave it all out, and, and he, he had injury problems before that. And now he just hasn't been able to stay on the field since. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I think that he is finished. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. When you watch J-Rod's opening round, you go, oh, yeah, everyone's going to get their bonus time, and it's really going to be a four-minute first round. Julio Rodriguez kind of teased a little bit there. He made it look Man. so easy. It was not that easy for almost everybody else that followed. Nobody had as big of a round one as Julio Rodriguez did. Only on SportsGrid.
It's time for Today in Carver High History. All right, let's go. 1959, the Red Sox become the last team in Major League Baseball to integrate under intense public pressure and the Massachusetts Committee Against Discrimination, 63. Jack Nicholas wins the first of his five PGA championships. 1967, Jimmy Fox, Hall of Fame first baseman, dies at 59, choking on food. Brutal, 75, Billy Martin fired as Texas Ranger manager. 1979, Seve Ballesteros wins the British Open three strokes over Jack and Ben Crenshaw. 89, Mike Tyson knocks out. Carl the Truth Williams, a buck 33 for the heavyweight title. The truth didn't last very long. 1991, Fergie Jenkins, Gaylord Perry, Rod Carew, and several hundred others elected into the Baseball Hall of Fame. 1996, Tom Lehman wins the British Open, his, fir his only major, first American to win at Lytham since Bobby Jones 70 years earlier. 96, Wayne Gretzky signs a two-year deal with the Rangers. He would finish his career there. 2002, Easy e Ernie Els wins the first of his two British Open titles in a playoff over Appleby, Elkington, and Levitt. Here it is. Ernie Els has what you see there. Must be a good four-footed, maybe a bit more. And this for the championship. If he misses, they go back and do it all over again. Oh, we do it all over again. Yeah! <laughs> Third time I guess he didn't him. mess. He's a champion of 2002. There, there you go. go. And then he joined uh, Liv. <laughs> 2013, <laughs> speaking of joining Liv, 2013, Phil Mickelson wins his fifth major. He won the British Open by three strokes over Henrik Stenson. Both of them are in Liv. And in 2019, Harold Baines, Roy Holiday, Edgar Martinez, Mike Messina, Mar Mariana Rivera, and Lee Smith and a partridge in a pear tree all went into the Hall of Fame. Just remember, Harold Baines and Lee Smith, they were put in by some dopey committee. They weren't actually voted into the Hall of Fame. So let's Harold Baines had a great <laughs> afro. <laughs>